Hi, I'm Susan. Welcome to my home and studio at Wendy Acre Cottage. It's a hundred year old craftsman cottage where I love to paint and garden and entertain and care for all my wonderful fur babies, both those that are adopted and all the little fosters. It's also my home base for many fun adventures of the art, history, and gardening kind. Today I'm in the mood to paint with watercolor. And many watercolor tablets you buy are cold pressed and ready to go. I tend to buy large sheets of watercolor paper and prepare them myself. It starts with cutting them to the right size and shape and allowing enough of a margin so that you can block it onto a board when you stretch the paper. Run a sink with about two or three inches of water and set each page of the watercolor paper down in the water making sure the water touches both sides of the page. We want to leave it for about 10 minutes so that it will absorb and expand. And remove the paper, get all the excess water off, lay it on your board, and then starting from the middle and going out, try to work out not only the water that's in there, but also stretching that paper a little more. A tea towel will help you absorb that extra water. That'll also help the uh, tape stick to the board. Now right here, I'm going to use a painter's tape, the blue tape. And this works especially well when you remove the tape so you don't tear the paper. However, it doesn't really stick well to wet paper here at the beginning. You can use your traditional masking tape. That's the gray or ecru colored tape. And it has just the opposite problem. It sticks really well in the beginning, especially to the wet paper. But when you go to remove it after you've painted your painting, you have to be extra careful not to tear your painting. I typically lay that tape on there about a quarter of an inch and then I generally stack them for the weight and let them dry. Here are a few of the paintings I've done in the past year or so. Many of these I turn into note cards and offer through Etsy. Others are used as reference paintings for watercolor classes that I teach. I also love to paint in a watercolor journal. This is the one that I use in my Adventure Awaits illustration painting class, but I also illustrate recipes and um, just about anything else I want to put in there. You might notice the paper's real wonky, and that's because the paper has not been pre-stretched or blocked. But I kind of like the way it looks. It almost has a vintage feel to it. My other travel watercolor painting journal is just lovely. It's handmade. The paper's handmade. And then the paper that I paint on actually has a deckled edge. I don't know if you can see that but I love the way that looks. It almost feels like fabric. And I've taken this to several historic sites to paint, as well as Isle of Palms, which is just north of Charleston, South Carolina. Again, the paper's not blocked, but I love the way it looks. It's not something that's gonna be framed and put under glass. I painted that on the plane going out to Denver with my brother, so much fun. We went to the Denver Art Museum to see the Monet exhibit, and I got to sketch that one at the museum, as well as this one right here. It was an amazing trip I'll never forget. <laughs> 